Members of Canada's Sikh and Muslim communities are demanding answers after the Prime Minister's shocking accusation that India is involved in the murder of Hardeep Singh Nijur. How did this murder happen in broad daylight and why did Nijur not have police protection? Minister of Public Safety Dominic Leblanc said that is not federal jurisdiction. The individual decisions by law enforcement agencies around who receives police protection are made by police officials, not by ministers. But was the information and passed the RCMP, to be offered? Again, that is, I don't direct uh, specific pieces of information or follow up as a police agency must and does uh, with respect to this intelligence information. I'm joined now by Balpreet Singh, legal counsel for the World Sikh Organization of Canada, and by Stephen Brown, CEO of the National Council of Canadian Muslims. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Uh, Mr. Singh, I wonder if I can start with you. You heard what Minister Leblanc just said about the protection that Mr. Niger may have had. Uh, it was up to the discretion of police officials. What do you know about the level of protection, if any, he might have had? And, and are you concerned there was a failure in protecting him, given the known threats? So Hardeep Singh Nijar was a very high-profile Canadian Sikh. Uh, he was the president of the Gurnanak Sikh Gurdwara, and he was an outspoken uh, advocate for Khalistan, which is a sovereign Sikh state. Uh, we knew as far back as June 2022 that his name was on an Indian hit list. Uh, so members of my organization and members of the community were in touch with law enforcement, with CSIS. And uh, I understand that they had contacted Mr. Niger last year, last summer, and he was uh, taken out from his home, uh, provided some protection. Uh, but uh, he even talked about this in the South Asian media and the Punjabi media. But I guess how long can you be uh, outside of your home? So he went back. But um, I understand that in April, when Sikh activists began to be targeted and two activists were killed prior to Mr. Niger, uh, he began to talk openly about the fact that he was next and uh, there was a target on his back. And once again, members of the community uh, spoke about this. In fact, once again, uh, law enforcement were informed. But uh, there wasn't enough done, in my opinion, and uh, he was shot dead in the parking lot of the Gordora in broad daylight. Mr. Brown, uh, uh, the bombshell accusation, um, you, know, you, you both you said today this was not a surprise to mm -hmm. you that India was involved with this. I mean, my jaw hit the floor when I heard the prime minister say what he said. Why do you think it wasn't a surprise? Why wasn't it a surprise for you and members of the diaspora community? Well, we've been hearing uh, for a long time complaints of members uh, of the Muslim community and the Sikh community uh, of the dangers posed by RSS-affiliated organizations in Canada. RSS is a paramilitary organization connected with the, the Hindu state in India. That's correct. So it, the RSS is a paramilitary organization, a far-right organization, and currently uh, the current BJP ruling party of India is a political wing of that organization. And so we've been hearing from many members of the community for a long time that they've been targeted targets of harassment as well as threats uh, in Canada and their families overseas of RSS-affiliated uh, individuals as well as organizations. And so when this happened, the first thing that the community thought was, um, oh my God, this must be uh, politically motivated violence. And Unfortunately, what we're seeing is effectively these allegations, very serious allegations, that a Canadian citizen was shot in broad daylight on the street of Vancouver by agents of a foreign government. It's absolutely, it's absolutely despicable. So how, how are people in the community you, you speak for, how are they, do you think they're feeling in, in the wake of these revelations and what happened and what the Prime Minister had to say? One, outrage, fear, second, um, but more importantly, uh, determination. The members of the Muslim community, in solidarity with the Sikh community, want to see action by the Canadian government to protect Canadian citizens. I mean, look, let's be honest here. Is there anything more serious than a Canadian citizen being assassinated by an agent of a foreign government on the streets of a major metropolitan city? Uh, nobody should have to be worried about walking out of a mosque or a gurdwara or any religious organization. Um, because somebody is going, to, is, is going to attack them. Mr. Singh, uh, uh, to no one's surprise, the government of India is denying this, calling the allegation absurd and motivated. They claim Canada is a safe haven for Khalistani terrorists and extremists. What's your reaction to what India is saying about this? So India is a very fragile nation, and uh, it often acts very irrationally when it's challenged or, or upset. So uh, what this is really about is about Khalistan advocacy. So to give you a little bit of background, Sikhs had a state until 1849 when it was annexed by the British. 
Uh, and when the British left in 1947, 98 years later, they divided the Punjab into two, two states, Pakistan, India, and six were left without a homeland. So six talking about sovereignty and asserting a separate identity uh, is seen as a threat to the Indian uh, nationalism, uh, to Indian Hindu identity. So the Hindutva government, the BJP government, insists that if you want to live in India, you should be a Hindu, you should speak Hindi. Uh, so uh, when we speak about Khalistan, uh, the state gets very irrational. So when there was these referendums, non-binding referendums taking place in Canada, India insisted that Canada should clamp down, that these things should not be happening uh, in Canada. But the definition of democracy is casting a vote. So how could Canada possibly stop it? So the first time this happened in Brampton in 2022, uh, India actually issued a travel advisory saying that their citizens should be weary of traveling to Canada because there's a threat to them uh, in Canada now. Over 100,006 voted in that referendum in Brampton. Now, in, in September, Mr. Niger was preparing for uh, a referendum there, and uh, he was very open about it. Uh, I think the Indian state thought that by assassinating him, they would strike fear into the people, they wouldn't show up, but over 135,000 Sikhs showed up to cast a vote in support of Khalistan. Uh, but the reaction the Indians have had is very, uh, very typical. They will uh, insist that this is completely nonsense, and uh, they're not a good faith actor as far as we're concerned. Well, and Mr. Brown, I mean, the criticism of Canada for allowing, you know, Sikh activists uh, to, to conduct their affairs in this country, I mean, it's been a long-standing issue between Canada and India. It certainly came up in 2018 when the Prime Minister went there and came up again at the recent G20. But, you know, in response to this, what you called the assassination, um, you've called for the expulsion of diplomats, the recalling of Canada's High Commissioner from India and a series of other measures, based on what the Prime Minister said today, that they didn't make this declaration yesterday to provoke things, but they want cooperation to get to the bottom of it, it doesn't seem to me that they're going to do what you're looking for them to do. What do you expect the government to do here? Well, look, let, let's be frank here. The Indian government um, is not a liberal democracy. I mean, this is a government where its officials have been persecuting minorities for a very long time. And, and we see this persecution happening in Canada as well. Uh, for the Canadian government, uh, the Canadian government's primary objective, its primary responsibility is to protect its citizens. Uh, diplomats have been expelled for less in the past. How can you have a relationship with a government that is killing your citizens in Canada? And, the f and I think there's something very important to note here. The Canadian government did not think that Mr. Najjar was a terrorist. So why are we constantly questioning what India thinks about this? I mean, right now, this is, a, this is an attempt to detract from the crimes that are being committed against minorities, both in India and now in Canada. So Canada needs, the government of Canada needs to do everything in its power to protect Canadian citizens. And that starts with banning the RSS in Canada, expelling of diplomats, recalling the diplomats, and also ceasing uh, trade talks for... Uh, for, uh, for economic uh, trade negotiations with, uh, with the state of India. Uh, Mr. Singh, uh, on that same point, and, and I'm not trying to minimize I mean, a person being murdered uh, in their car by, by two masked men, but the geopolitics, you're well aware uh, of, of the situation, the importance of India in that part of the world, as people look as a counterweight to China, and, and you've seen sort of the reluctance from a lot of the Western allies to come out and strongly condemn this. They've just expressed concern about what is happening. So when you look at that lay of the land geopolitically, what do you reasonably anticipate Canada might do as next steps in this? I think that's precisely the reason Canada has been so reluctant to act until now. Uh, Indian interference in Canada is decades long. There are books written about it. Uh, even agents that were active here in the 80s uh, and after that have written about their exploits here and interfering and buying contacts, buying media. So what can Canada do? Well, I can tell you what Canada can't do. Canada can't continue with the status quo. Uh, when you have a state coming onto our sovereign territory and targeting a Canadian citizen uh, with murder, I mean, that's beyond what Russia or China have ever done. So the status quo is clearly not uh, acceptable. Uh, intelligence sharing between these two countries and cooperating on extremism, uh, I think we have to reevaluate what we're doing. India calls anything that it uh, finds, uh, I guess, threatening to its unity or its territorial integrity as extremism. So we talk about Khalistan, they said that's terrorist, that's extremism. 
when we think about that word, we think about violence. Mm -hmm. When they say that word, they're thinking about anything that challenges challenges their status quo. So for us, we can't uh, continue on the way we have been. And I think I agree. Uh, we are together with the NCCM in calling for a recall of our diplomats and sending theirs back. And trade talks, intelligence sharing, all of that has to be put on hold while we reevaluate. And uh, if India is a good faith actor, which it's I, uh, not to date, it hasn't been, but it should cooperate in this investigation fully, along with the other cases that are currently being investigated. And I should also mention in conclusion that Mr. Niger wasn't the only Sikh that was on a hit list. There are a number of Sikhs that are currently not able to live in their own homes or live with their families because their lives are at imminent risk. They've been told that they can't be around their own children because if they're shot, their children may be harmed. That's unacceptable for Canadians. Uh, gentlemen, there's a lot more to say on this topic, uh, but we're out of time. We're going to have to leave it there, and, but uh, we'll have you back uh, as things develop on this. We appreciate your time. Balpreet Singh and Stephen Brown, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having us.